the title is Calhoun Quality Standards, and that morphs into a couple aspects of the way we do our business, the way we do our drawings, the way we supply information to our customers, selection of the components that we supply to our customers, as well as the quality systems we have here in the factory to ensure that we are providing the specified components to achieve the reliability of the buildings. So there's some systems we have in place here for certifications of the welders, traceability of the materials, and that just forms part of the overall quality system we have in place. The engineering of the structure is really just the first step. The design needs to be sound, but the, critically, it needs to be built in coordination with the design. So we need to supply the installers, we need to supply them with the best information possible, the easiest uh, access to that information so they can put it together right. The biggest risk in that installation is that the installer misinterprets the plans, the plans aren't clear, and they don't build the building the way it was intended to be built. So our objective with our drawings that we're providing to our customers is to make it as clear as possible, make the information as accessible as possible, so it's easy to do it the right way. And it gives us the best chance that the built structure is exactly the way we intended it to be on the design side, and that's how we ensure that reliability. So from the very originating steel billet that is purchased to be rolled into strip, which is then rolled into tubing, which is uh, built into our product, we have traceability of that material right from the originating steel mill. So the finished truss that gets delivered to our customer, we can go through every steel component in that piece and trace it all the way back to the originating manufacturer. And that system is in place so that we can ensure the material that's specified by the engineer is the material that's purchased, it's the material that goes into the part, it's welded by a qualified welder in a company that is qualified and certified to have quality inspection systems in place, and that's manifested in that finished component. So every piece in that part is, is tracked all the way through, and that way we know that we've achieved that objective of providing the specified component at the required quality level to support the reliability of the design. In addition to the steel that goes into the truss components that we build, uh, we do trace all of the other structural components that go into the building, example being these, the bolts that we uh, purchased from a supplier. And these all come with a certification from the supplier to us, verifying that they are the specified grade of bolt. What we do see in uh, some areas of the industry, we see structures where structural bolts are not specified. In fact, this is a grade five bolt. And you, right away, you can see a little bit of a difference there. This structural bolt has a larger head on it. That gives it a larger bearing area under the, the head of the bolt. So when we clamp down on these structural connections, we've got a little bit more bearing area in this bolt. This bolt is a slightly higher strength bolt than you would find in an equivalent a grade five bolt. The A325 bolt, uh, sits kind of in between grade five and grade eight as far as strength, but it maintains its ductility, its, its ability to stretch uh, at a higher strength level. Another thing we specify with all of our hardware is hop dip galvanizing for the hardware. Um, a consumer a grade bolt you might find in the hardware store it might look like this one. It's a zinc plated, that is a, an anti-corrosion coating. Uh, the galvanizing coating that we do on our bolts is a much thicker coating. This will last much, much longer in protecting this bolt from the environment and keep it from rusting. That is again critical to the reliability of the structure. Uh, if the bolt rusts, it starts to lose its strength. It starts to degrade its capacity, which will then potentially affect the reliability of the structure over time. So what we do with, the, with these bolts is we bring them what's called snug tight. So you bring them up to the point where all the fang surfaces, all the connecting surfaces are in firm, but not necessarily continuous contact. That's exactly what the standard says. And then we prescribe two thirds of a turn of the nut. So there's half a turn, and then another two flats is the other third of the turn. That, we know that has to stretch the bolt by a known amount. So it might take um, 300 foot pounds of torque. It might take 350, it might take 500, we don't care. We, but we know that nut has turned the right amount. We put the appropriate amount of stretch into that, that bolt because the whole thing acts as a spring. In fact, once we've pre-tensioned one of these A325 bolts, if we remove it, we actually have to throw it away and replace it. Reason we do that is the behavior of these connections is vital to the performance of the structure as required uh, in the engineering design. So the right component in the right place installed in the right way 
ensures that we get that reliability for the end user. So in the instruction pages with the, the details of the building, we do have a, an instruction for every bolt. So every bolt that's specified in a detail is given a number. Over here on this table, the number is listed for which bolt goes in there. It tells you exactly what the installation condition needs to be. That one happens to be snug tight plus two thirds of a turn. So every bolt is listed for every detail in the building. We do something similar with the cables where we give the instructions for the cables, we tell you exactly how many proof turns, that's that initial set that the cable needs to take to take the inelastic stretch out of it. And then we have the pretension turns all listed here. Right below it, that's the instructions on exactly how you go about doing that installation. So we bring them hand tight, we install the proof turns, we loosen them to slack, then we install the pretension turns. Right here, right exactly where you would be looking for it because this diagram shows which cable goes where. And we give the length of the cable here. So the amount of turns you're gonna put in the cable varies by how long the cable is. A longer cable is a longer spring. So it's gonna take more turns to achieve the same pretension. So we have that right here, exactly where the installer is gonna be looking to figure out which cable goes where. There's your instructions on exactly how to put them in. Similarly on those detail pages where the installer is gonna look for which bolt to use, there's the instructions right there how to do it. Uh, if there is any question about exactly the procedure for pretensioning a bolt, that is, again, also listed in some of the instructions. There's a whole section in here on, uh, on the bolt installations. Our documentation is at a level where we can demonstrate the right competence, the right duty of care that we've put into the whole product, and that's manifested in those drawings, and that ensures that we're doing our job correctly, allows everybody else to do their job correctly, and we, we end up with a reliable building.